and all of God's saints say, Amen. Amen and Amen. Wonderful to be able to bring uh, the word this morning uh, to us. Uh, the word this morning is from the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, and today we will be looking at, in fact, we're looking at a section, uh, verses 18, right through to the beginning of chapter 2. Uh, but today we'll look specifically at verses 22. 23, 24, 25. Uh, in verses 18 through to 21 last week, uh, we were able to look at the contrast between the world's wisdom and God's wisdom. Ile amata ina ofa upuya na o ina leva yasona te ane na tato tilo tilo mava alva ai ile ese esenga ole poto fa ale lalolangi male poto ale atua. Remembering, if you think back uh, when we first started the book of Corinthians, the whole of the letter is addressing issues. So this letter of Corinthians is a, is a very heavy letter in terms of the purpose. The first part that he's addressing, we started in verse 10, was the fact that in the church was, was division. Uh, in the church were those who said, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas. And I'm of Christ. The divisions were made up of those who were, um, who became part of the personality groups uh, or grouping. Mao mai to tonu o le olanga male soi fuo fa le kirisiano ai o mai ai me mala to winga o le la lolangi e te ta o mau mai a e ai te mi ta to te o mai ai to tonu si o si o manga o fa tu a tu a fa na fuo winga lo ta to o langa fa o la ina lo ta to o langa suia ai ai la va winga o le tanga ta tu a pe au mai to tonu le soi fuo fa o la ina. Taifa pe nala se va aina ile ekalesia. Olo o yae mata upu matali tonunga ile olanga fa ale korenito. Ae ua va aia e paulo ua a mata o na ali ali mai i totonu ole ekalesia. The reason why he's writing about the contrast of God's wisdom and the world's wisdom was that Paul was addressing the issue of division because... Those who had become part of the body of believers, there was now division among the believers because they had come into the church with worldly philosophies or worldly thoughts and ideas and ideology. And now Paul was addressing that those issues had crept into the church. Remembering we uh, learned last week that philosophy and this uh, area of Greece or Corinth um, were, was full of uh, philosophies or world ideologies. And so those who had become believers, those who had become part of the members of the body of Christ, had brought some of that in. If you look at Colossians 2, I'm just going to reference some of these uh, uh, New Testament 
um, text to highlight the wisdom of the world. Colossians 2 verse 8, it reads like this. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. This is Paul's writing as well. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Uh, that's what we receive from the world. That's what basically Paul is addressing from Corinth, is that there was philosophy, there was deceit of the world that had crept into the church and was causing division. Uh, it was the tradition of men. It was according to the principles of the world. The world will have its principles. The world will have its ideologies. But it's not according to Christ. Like it says there at the end of Colossians 2 verse 8, it says it's not according to Christ. So we know that um, the, the ideologies of the world, the philosophies of the world, is not part of the church. It's only according to the doctrines of Christ. When we look at the wisdom of Christ, when we look at the wisdom of God for the believers, we look at James 3.17. It says there, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom of God for the believers. That's the contrast. Ah. So and today we're going to look at the second part. So if you were here last week, we were looking at the foolishness, and foolishness of the message of the cross. Uh, so the world and its philosophy, the world and its ideology, the world and its teachings and its doctrines, look at the cross of the Christians and they say that is foolishness. So we're going to look at the second part today, looking at verses 22 through to 25. And I'm going to ask um, us to read those verses this morning. Uh, New King James Bible readers, if we can read verses 22 through to 25. Uh, for Jews, e ya. For Jews request the same, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, there are Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the 
weakness of God is stronger than me. Asamoa awa iya. Saili ila so in the pot. Aumato. Ua ma tota la yatu ya periso no falasato ruina. For the mea itau sua ya yu saile. Malibadea ya ele. I pay tai oe ua vala hawina. O yu saila a toa ma ele. Ua fai keriso ma mana ole atua. Ma poxo ole atua ya seila so. Awa ole valea ole atua. E sili lo na poxo itangata. Ole vai vai foi ole atua. E sili lo na ma losi itangata. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Awa ole valea ole atua. E sili lo na poxo itangata. Ole vai vai foi ole atua. E sili lo na ma losi Itangata. Today I'm going to talk about the contrast, uh, the contrast between what the Jews and the, and the Gentiles are searching and their wisdom and their signs that they're looking for and the power and the wisdom of God. Male poto male mana ole atua. Ile ba inga mo mo o te fiete la noa i tu inga ya pole tu inga poto male malosi ma fai longa o lo sa ili iai le la lolani le la fai tawina fai poe luas fuma le lua fai mai a wa o lo fai mai o te ya ise fai longa ma e leni o lo o sa ili ilato ile poto. The first part of our sermon today, I want to talk about. That the world and the ideologies of this world would seek after signs, would seek after wonders, would seek after miracles. They would even seek after uh, the wisdom, ah, the intellects and the philosophies and the academics of the world. That's what the world pursues. And it says there in verse 22, for Jews request a sign. So let's look at um, the Jews first. tilo tilo mua. Ile amatanga le fai puna lua spul male lua o lo au mai ai fa mai awa o lo fai mai yu tsaya ise fa ai longa atato tilo tilo ile i um tusia eva na ria ta itasi o le tele yo mau e fa tatau ile tsemi nga lua yesu ile fesili ai o tangata yu tsaya mose fa ai longa if we look at the testaments and the record of the gospels um, there are a number of times and numerous times where the Jews themselves, during the ministry of Jesus Christ, they would always ask him, give us a sign. If you're the son of a God, give us a sign. And um, I've given a number of um, texts there, Matthew 12, 38, 39, Mark 8, 11, Luke 11, 16. But I'm going to use Matthew 16. And there's numerous times where the Jews were constantly in their unbelief. They constantly would ask Jesus for a sign. But if we look at Matthew 16, Jesus <laughs> Se tasi fo yo feilo inga Yesu ma ma tai tai yo Israelu fa mai le mana onga tai tai ye fa ipu mua mua fa mai fa ali ya tuia ya te ilato se fa ilonga mai le lang ah so se tasi fo yo mau etau ade tai tai yo Israelu ona ololato le tali tun fa apea tu ayu te ya fa ilonga mai se fa ilonga if you look at uh, Matthew chapter 16, um, they were requesting a sign from heaven, and that's the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And these men are the leaders of Israel at the time. And they say there um, in Matthew's record, uh, for him, for Jesus, the him is Jesus, that he would show them a sign from heaven. And listen to Jesus' response in verse 4. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah 
and he left them and departed. Jesus responded to them because of their unbelief. So we see here that in, uh, that Jesus Christ himself, when in his ministry, the Jews would ask him for a sign. And we even see his response in Matthew 13. And Matthew 13, he responds this way. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. They would see his miracles. He would perform the miracles. There were plenty of signs around the time of Jesus Christ, but yet they did not believe. So we see another um, uh, quote there in John. John chapter 6 verse 2. And we see there John write these verses with regards to those who saw signs. It says, verse 1, After these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. 2. Then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. At the time of Christ, the Jews would follow Jesus. Israel would be drawn to him, not because they believed that he was the Messiah or the Son of God. It was because they saw the signs. Ah, There's probably a bunch of Samoans in there too. Ah, they're attractive because the signs ah, and the miracles and the feeds and, the, and, and all of the wonders that Jesus would perform. But they weren't following him because he was the Messiah. They followed him because of the signs. And that's what the text today is saying, is that the Jews would ask for a sign. We even said that, um, see that even in his death, um, in their mockery, they actually asked for a sign. And we look at Matthew 27 and, you know, we see the chiefs and the scribes and the elders there. Um, verse 41, likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and elders said, this is while Jesus was hanging on the cross. Verse 42, he saved others himself. He cannot save if he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe him. That's how, despite the fact that they've crucified the son of God, how great their unbelief was, that they would say, man, if he comes down from the cross, we would believe. That's how, that's how their thinking was. That was their philosophy. That was their world, was that if Jesus says who he, is, um, who he says he is, then show us a sign and we will believe him, even in his time of death.
ele ma faya e yona fa ola ya teia a faya le tupo isara elu oya ina luifo ne lava oya ile sa tauro ona ta to tari tonu wa ile ya teia e o ola ve le maliwo yesu a e pe e ta wemu ta ngata ta ta ile nu o isara elu ina ya fa ilo ma se fa ilo ma yesu a faya oyo le alo le atua a luifo ye la lo sa tauro fa to a ma to tari tonu wa ile Peyo winga yo tangata yu taya e fa amao ni ai le upu lea o lo tato feita wina le tae au le nei for my for o lo fa mai yu taya ise fa ai longa. So some of these texts that we see from the gospels highlight the attitude that the Jews had. So the question is why did they have such an attitude? And we look at verse twenty three b. The reason why is because to the Jews the cross and the death of the Messiah. Was a stumbling block. The cross and the death of the Messiah to the Jews in the time of Jesus Christ was a stumbling block. Um, and I, I read a quote, and it says Jesus was contrary to the expectation of the Jewish Messiah. He was not the Messiah they were after. Atato tilo tilo olea la vale mafu anga. Na mana na oi ya tangata yu taya ise fa ailonga. Na tani le fa ipu elu suma tolu atato tu si taya ole nei. Fa mai ole ole sa tauru male maliu ole mesia. Fa mai ole mea lea ole mea tau suwa yai le tangata yu taya. Aisea ole mesia le sa fa atali tali yai tangata yu taya. Ole mesia na te sawe manu malo ai le tangata isara elu. Ole Mesia na te sawe ave faa faa muta ina le faa tangata utawa ina o Isara elu. I lalo le pule anga o Roma a ia tu la imai o ia ole Mesia manu ma lo. A ia fio mai e sui lo na olua a ia fio mai maliu le saatauro. Ole mafu anga la le na ole saatauro ole maliu e ia su ele o se mea e fia fia ile tangata yutaia. I fa mai le fa ipo elu su maltolu o le mea e tausu wa yai le tangata yutaya. They were looking for the reigning Messiah. They were looking for the Isaiah nine seven. Ah, if you remember Isaiah nine seven and that famous prophecy of the birth of Jesus Christ. But at the end in verse seven it says, "Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end." Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it, establish it with just judgment and justice. They were looking for that Messiah, that Messiah there that will establish his throne forever. But the first coming of the Messiah died on a cross, and the Jews were saying, "Nah, that's not our Messiah. That can't be our Messiah." <coughs> For me, I say, I don't talk about even if I put it to if I tell you, le le no for inga or le or le or le Messiah if I have a vow. For me, le if I put it to you, le I say me ngata ma yai ona tele olona malo malefile mu olona malo le no for ali ota vita malona malo if I tu ma wina ma fa a ma usali le fa a masinonga maleami otunu e a fu a mai iya ona po e o o ile fa a vow. E faya lea mea ile ma ele nga o yoba o au. O le mesia lea, le i loa le tangata yu taia a. O le mesia i olona nofua inga e faa vavau. O le fio mua mua mai o Yesu, fa mai tangata yu taia, ina ua maliu Yesu ile saataro. E le o le mesia lea nei a matou. O no le mesia matou, e sau oia e manu malo. A ya fio mai Yesu, maliu fa alaba au ilungo le saataro. Male lilo ile manatu wa tangata yu taia, oia ole faaula. Ngalo ile tangata yu taia le isaia lima suma tolu. Ngalo ile tangata yu taia le salamo e lua suma le lua. O tusi faitawia olo lata o tula afono, o mawia ole fea nei matuwai, olo otau wa ia te ilato, ale mesia lea, ole mesia lea, e afio mai e maliu. The Jews forgot about Isaiah 53. The Jews forgot about Psalms 22. Those are famous Old Testament prophecies that write about the death of the Messiah. The Jews ignored that. They rejected those ones. But they looked at the cross and thought, no, that cannot be. 
It was a stumbling block to them. So that's why in our text this morning, the Jews seek a sign. The second part we see there is that the Greeks, it says the Jews seek a sign, whereas the Greeks, they're after wisdom. When we look at the Greeks, when they're looking out, uh, when they're looking out for wisdom, they seek wisdom. Um, so the Greeks are rationalists. Uh, they're intellects. Uh, they're academics. They're after the latest thing. Uh, and they want their own conclusions about the meaning of life. That's what the Greeks were after. Let's, let's look at a text that explains or gives us insights into what the Greeks possibly looked like. Uh, Acts 17, uh, verses 19 to 21, and the requests of the Epicurean and the Stoics to Paul when Paul was at Athens. Ile ile... Leata o le tangata e leni ma le poto fa a filosofia a le la lolangi. Ma le tuole la lolangi le alo tatu yai temi nei. O le o le poto fa a le la lolangi ma talitonunga fa a le la lolangi. O le to sina ya o loto tangata yai. O poto ma filosofia fa a le la lolangi. E to sina mo fi lava tangata i le poto a le la lolangi. Be o leata fo i la le na o tangata e leni a. So let's start read verse 19 to 21. So this is Paul. Imagine Paul. He's arrived at Athens and um, the Epicureans and the Stoics. These are popular ph uh, philosophers in Athens. And this is their request to him. So the New King James Bible readers, if you can read 19 to 21. Yeah. So, so I imagine that Paul, this is his world, ah, because Paul himself was a Pharisaical academic, ah, so he was well versed as a as a Hebrew. But him standing before Athens and, um, and, and, and him being requested by these philosophers, come and tell us something new. This gives us a little bit of insight into the world of Greece at the time, the world of Athens at the time. And this was their request. Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear something new. And we see that in our universities today we see that in our world today society today people are coming up with the latest ideas and they like to talk about it and they promote it and that the world hasn't changed so i tato mata mata fe upuna for me fe tsa wina ole ole mana onga tsanga tsa ya sa ya atenai for me la le fe tsa wina fe upu ya sulma le iba le luas pulma le tsasi wa abe ila tso ya tse ya wa tsa itsa ya tsui a ro pako Wafapemai. <laughs> Sina tala faa to ai loa. O tangata ye lo ate nai. Tangata ye lo fesili a pao lo. Sa wala ta o mai po le alea. Le alea o onga fou o lo e au maia. Le alea me fou le ma to te faa nung longai. Ona, o tangata le la lo langi. 
e sa ini la ka ila to ini me fo a oni va ina fo ko ni me ma ta utia e ma fo ai ona i lo e le tsangatsa lo la to filosofia filosofia ma na la to i lo i lo uma ta to i tsangatsa fa pe na a e ma ne yo fa i uno le talia paulo a ta to ti lo ti lo le fa i po tolus fo ma le fa i po tolus uma ta si e fa ai u le talia paulo i le ta wa tu o le tala le le fa mai u po paulo na fa pa le pa le le tu ai ona po le valia a lo fetsa la i mai nei i tsangatsa uma i no uma lava ia salamo a wa u fa tu wina e ia le aso e fa masino ina ai le la lo langi ma le tsonu e le tsangatsa u to fia e ia o lo fa ma oni mai ai e ia i tsangatsa uma lava i lo na to e fa tu mai ya te ia ye u oti o ai le na fa i ai e pa lo la na la la na tali ya tu i tsangatsa ne I love Paul's ending to his response to the Epicureans and the Stoics. Ah, they ask him, tell us this new thing. And if you read the, the following verses there from uh, verses uh, 22 right through to verse 31, he ends off his response with the gospel message. And he says this in verse 30 and 31, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked. But now commands all men everywhere to repent. Ah, uh, his response was, "You philosophers of Athens, you must repent." And he goes on in verse thirty-one because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. He tells them about the eternal judgment that is at hand, and he says the the righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by. Raising him from the dead tells them about the resurrection Amen. of the one and only Jesus Christ. So the Greeks ask for wisdom. Paul responds to them in the book of Acts with the gospel. That hasn't changed today, ah. For mai le la lo langi, o lo sa ili le la lo langi se poto fo, o lo sa ili le la lo langi se tali tonunga fo, se tali tonunga matautia, o lo sa ili sa moa ili mea fo, mani mea. Matautia, au le tali le tsangata fa atua tua, e tatau ona e tali atu le tala le lei. Amen? Ah, our response as believers to the world who's asking and requesting for new philosophies should always be the gospel. That should be our priority. Ah, just like Paul. And it says there, the reason why they ask for, the Greeks, why do they ask for, for wisdom? The two answers in verse 23 are, It says, because to the Greeks, the cross, that Messiah of yours that's hanging on the cross, when the Greeks look at that, they say that's moria, that's moronic, that's stupid. How can your savior be the one hanging naked on a tree? To the Greeks, they sought after wisdom, because a man hanging on a tree to save the world was absolute foolishness to them. Ole ale mafu anga sa ile e le ni pole ale mafu anga sa ile le la lo langi pole poto le la lo langi ile poto ona fa mai o tsangatsa e le ni a lato va va ai ile tsangatsa le o lo tsau tsau ile sa tsaro fa mai ile ato fa mai o yuta ya o le me tsau sua ya e a le e le ni fa mai o le me va le a va ai le tsangatsa o le la lo langi pe fa long o le tsangatsa la lo langi ile poto le atua fa mai le poto le atua le poto ato ato le atua na ilo na alo ina o maliu o ia fa lava au ilo ma le sa tsaro fa mai le la lo langi o le mata opu fa ga le le o le mata opu e le ai sona o na o le mata opu e fa ata o va a o le mata opu le sa tsaro e le ma natu ma wa lunga ai le la lo langi ai o le poto sili sili e se le na o le atua Praise the Lord. Now, for me, matau pu elua na olo yai fai pu suma fa. For me, ole ole poto fa ale la lo langi nei. For me, ya Paulo, ai le tali ai le tangata fa ale tino o mea ale anganga ole atua awa o mea valea ia ya teia. Ole matau pu le sata ro ole mea valea le ile la lo langi. Then, when we look at the message of the cross. Chapter two, verse fourteen. It reads this: But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. 
the natural man, the philosopher, the academic, the, the intellect of this world, they do not think highly of the cross or the message of the cross. Why? Because they are natural. Ah, the things of the Spirit of God are foolishness to him. So today when we look at our text and it says there uh, in our text this morning that um, for the Jews request a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, we now see that the wisdom of the Greeks uh, and the signs that the Jews are requesting, we can easily see that that's exactly what the world is after. Uh, they will say, prove to us your God. Prove to us that he is an amazing God. You know, that the grace that we believe in, prove to us. Show us a sign. What's the latest philosophy in your world? Those are the questions that they ask. But we continue to stand on the message of the gospel. Now let's look at the contrast. Because then Paul goes on to write, here in this text, the contrast with regards to the power and the wisdom of God. And the second point of our sermon today that when we look at the wisdom and the power of God, there are three things that I just wanted to highlight in verses 23 through to 25. And I love Paul's uh, writing there just in the beginning of 23. He says, But we... Preach Christ crucified. Number one, the wisdom of God is the preaching of the gospel and the message of the cross. It says there in verse 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Verse 30, it says, uh, sorry, in verse 21, it says, uh, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through the wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Number one, ah, the wisdom of God is the preaching of Christ. We preach Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, Paul says there, We do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord. Believers, I pray that that's what you preach. I pray that that's what you proclaim. Ah, in our world today, in a world that's requesting a sign, a world that's requesting proof, a world that is requesting wisdom, that we would continue to preach the wisdom of God, and that is Christ himself. Praise the Lord. Let's look at First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. And here is the gospel message. Here is the Christ that we preach uh, in Paul's uh, words at the end of. First Corinthians. Ah. And then we'll ask our English Bible readers. Here's the gospel message that Paul records here in chapter 15. Verse 1 to 4 in chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, 
by which also you are saved, that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also did. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Praise the Lord. And that in those four verses we see there, Paul says, I declare to you the gospel that I preached to you. This is the same letter that we're reading here, but in chapter 15. And Paul is saying, I preached to you this gospel. As we read in the text today, that we preach Christ crucified. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's Amen. the wisdom of God. That the simple message of Christ crucified is far greater than the philosophies of the world. That's amazing insight. If you were to put together the whole intellect of the world, all of its philosophers, and from the time of history, right through to the present, and you put it next to the gospel, the gospel always wins. Why? The philosophy can't save you. The philosophy can't give you an eternal life. The philosophies can't forgive your sins. The message of the gospel, you share that, it transforms lives. It gives you eternal life. It forgives your sins. Praise the Lord. Amen. Second, we see there in verse 24, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God. Number one, the wisdom of God, we preach Christ. Number two, Christ is the power of God. We see here that there is a power through Christ's death. That when we look at the cross, when we as believers look at the cross, when we as believers look at the death of the Messiah, the death of, the death of Jesus Christ, that death has power. The world looks at it and thinks it's foolish. We look at it and we see God's eternal power in the death of Christ. Um, and so when we look at... Uh, that word power, and, and I just want to do a side note here, because that word power in, the, in our text this morning comes from that word that we looked at last week, dunamis. But we see, the, we see the word power used throughout the gospel. The other meaning of the word power is uh, the Greek word exousia. And that, look, that talks about Jesus' authority. The thing is, Jesus has both dunamis and exousia. Ah, he has both power, might, strength. And also authority. And he talks about uh, Matthew 9, 6. He has the power or the exousia to forgive. But in the text today, Paul is writing and he's saying, the wisdom of God is Christ, the power of God. He's the strength of God, the might of God. Uh, so he's both authority and power. Dunamis, dynamite. That's where we get the English word dynamite ah, from the Greek word dunamis. dunamis to, and so we see it in Luke chapter 4, verse 14, where the Holy Spirit empowers Christ for the ministry. Ah, so if you look at Luke chapter 4, verse 14, it has those words there. It says, um, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the news of him went through all of the surrounding regions. So he has the dunamis to start his ministry. Ah, we also see the power of Christ to strengthen us in our time of weakness. If you look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 9 
and 10. And it reads there, and this is Paul's words again. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Even in our moments of weakness, our moment of sin, we can depend on the power that Christ strengthens us with. Praise the Lord. So, when we're looking at the contrast, here the world is asking for a sign. The world is asking for wisdom. But when we look at the contrast of the foolishness of the message of the cross, number one, the wisdom and the power of God is in the preaching of Christ. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Christ and Christ crucified and rose again on the third day. Number two, we also look at the power of God in Christ. In the death of Christ, the power of God in the cross. And number three, uh, we see here in that verse 24, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And we see straight away that Christ is the wisdom of God highlighted in verse 30. So if you look down in verse 30, it says there, but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us Wisdom from God. Praise the Lord. Ah, Jesus Christ, who became for us the wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. I am Moa Yesu, we are Moa le Poto, my dear Tua. Ete Lua, after your oil at Tangata Fana for Wina, after you to two for Atasi oil, Matangata Mawurunga, the Lalolangi, the name, Matangata Philosophia, the Lalolangi, the name, Matangata Mawa, the Lalolangi, the name, 
e sili oi aisea o lo oi ate oi le poto mai le atua oi o yesu that when we look at that verse 30 and it says there but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God the world is asking for degrees qualification um, asking those things aren't bad ah but the world would ask for it the world's philosophy is that man you need to be you know we need to rationalize this and we need to figure these things out but if you were to stand you as a believer you who have Christ in your life you who have been changed and have been born again if you stand next to the most academic person in the whole wide world with philosophers of this world who are greater ah you're more because you have Christ. Praise the Lord. Ah. Esili tato. Esili tato. Ona. O lo ya te itato. Yesu keriso. Pole poto. O yesu keriso. Kolose lua lona mtapu. E lua mal. Fai upu e lua mal fai upu e tolu. Ina iri lo le lei. Le upu ale atua sali lo. O le tama le atua ma keriso. Wayatea le oloa uma o le poto a toa male mala malama ua lilo ai. O lo tala noa ile le poto o le olo o ya Yesu Keriso. Fa mai wayatea le oloa uma o le poto. Ah. Ele ngata ile poto. A wayatea le oloa uma o le poto a toa male mala malama. A fai o lo yate o Yesu Keriso. O le vaina le olo o ya ifo ilo tato so ifuanga. Then Colossians 2. Uh, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. I'm just going to read 2b. And it says there, uh, To the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's just another text to reinforce that in Christ is all wisdom of God. Ah. So when we see here, contrast the wisdom and the power of God, that's the message of the cross. The message of the cross that we preach. The message of the cross is the power of God. The message of the cross is the wisdom of our eternal God. Praise the Lord. Because then it says there in verse 25, and this is us finishing off. In verse 25 today, and this is the final text that we would cover for today. Because then Paul says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now that verse isn't written from God's point of view, that's written from men's point of view, and how ironic that the foolishness of God, His weakness, is far greater, far stronger than all of men's wisdom and their strength. And um, so, I tato mata mata fai puna and was fuma limo tai ale ne, fai well tato mata for me a ole a wa ole balea ole a tua, a silly lona poto itangata, ole vai vai foi ole a tua, a silly lona ma losi itangata. Usuma tu fafin, e a tato i loa, ma mouti noa ile tai ale ne, a silly silly esse, ma maua lunga, le mea wa faya ele a tua, e ala ile maviu. O Yesu Keriso. I say, when not only Maliwa Yesu Keriso Mafaye, on a Fatamang, Alo Atato on a Sala. When not only Maliwa Yesu Keriso Malona Toy to my Emafaye, on a Moe Tato, Leola e Fatavavau. When not only Maliwa Yesu Keriso Malona Toy to my, when Moe Tato, Lifeso or Tainga Maleatua. Elemafaye ele la Lolangi, mea na. And I end off with a quote from John MacArthur this morning, and these are some words that he says. Human wisdom can't forgive sin, can't give life eternal, and it can't bring men to God. God steps in and made their wisdom foolish by what he did. He forgave sin, he granted eternal life, and he ushered men into the knowledge of himself. All of the philosophies of the world, all of the wisdom of the world cannot <coughs> save us. The only thing that can save is the gospel. The only thing that can save. And that's a message for us today. Mm -hmm. For those of us who have heard the message time and time again, and you've yet to make that decision, or you're still unsure, I'm still going to knock the door up. I'm still going to ask you, have you made that choice? Have you made that decision? 
Do you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Have you made him Lord and Savior of your life? Or if you see me, say, I'll let me. But what a Talia air let a little lay there. Ah, let me out there or two like yet at all. It's tonal in a vaino Latino periso. We stand for the Jesus Christ that died on the cross, that rose again on the third day, now sits at the right hand of the Father, advocating on our behalf. I plead with you, I urge with you, consider that today. Ah, the year letter. I just finish with these two texts today. But to those who are called, we'll read together. E ya. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again that we have your truth. We thank you, Lord, that the psalmist says that. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And Lord, you've given us more light today. And we now understand that there's a vast difference between the wisdom and the signs of the world that they ask for and the wisdom and the power of our God. Why? Because the foolishness of the message of the cross is the power and the wisdom of God. And so Lord, we thank you. We thank you once again, those who are considering whether or not they believe in your son and his death and the forgiveness of sin, Lord, we pray and we urge, Lord, that you will continue to stir their hearts. Don't, don't let them settle in their hearts, but let them be convicted in their hearts. We pray for the brethren and we pray for the believers that they are strengthened today by the might of your word. We pray these things in Jesus' name and we all say, Amen. 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 Amen.